Die Deutscher, Through the Language Glass, Why the World Looks Different in Other Languages. Embark on an enlightening journey with a Through the Language Glass, Why the World Looks Different in Other Languages by Guy Deutscher, as we explore the captivating intersection of language, culture, and perception. In this fascinating book, you'll discover how language not only reflects but also influences the way we perceive colors and the world around us. Furthermore, the book delves into the evolution of color perception, the impact of linguistic differences on thought processes and the intriguing connection between social structure and the complexity of language. Unravel the threads of this entwined relationship between language and culture, shedding new light on the ways we perceive and understand our world. Color Perception in Ancient Greece The perception of color varied between cultures, and the ancient Greeks had a vastly different way of viewing the world than we do today. William Ewart Gladstone, an English scholar, analyzed the words for color in the Iliad and the Odyssey and argued that the ancient Greeks had an underdeveloped perception of color. They mostly saw things in black and white and didn't have a well-defined sense of color. Homer's descriptions of things like honey and twigs as chloros, green, were meant to symbolize paleness and freshness. Gladstone believed that this lack of perception of color could be attributed to the lack of artificial colorants. Blue was particularly rare, and the concept of blue didn't exist in the ancient Greek language. The ancient Greeks had yet to go through an education of the eye to perceive differences in color like we do today. Evolution of Color Sense In 1867, Lazarus Geiger proposed that the evolution of humankind could be traced through language, specifically through the treatment of color in ancient texts. Geiger's postulation helped explain the evolution of color sense in the entire human race. Interestingly, color words developed in the same order everywhere in the world. Unfortunately, subsequent researchers spent decades chasing the erroneous belief in the inheritance of acquired characteristics as proposed by Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Hugo Magnus' thesis that the human retina develops its sensitivity to color through acquired improvements in color perception was based on this belief. In contrast, culturalists reasoned that changes in color perception were unrelated to anatomical changes, following Geiger's belief that we cannot infer which colors ancient humans perceived by examining language alone. However, anecdotes of ancient cultures preceding Homer suggest that they could perceive the color blue. This suggests that Geiger's postulation was correct and that the evolution of color sense can be traced through language. Color Perception Across Cultures Islanders on Murray Island had a vaguer vocabulary of colors than other cultures, but the lack of distinction in their language had nothing to do with their vision. In 1898, W.H.R. Rivers went to Murray Island and tested the islanders' ability to distinguish between colors, they were able to despite not having words for specific colors. The islanders likely chose the closest color label in their palette to represent a given color. This phenomenon is not unique to this culture as the English language also groups distinguishable colors together under one name. The Nature and Culture of Color Words Color concepts are determined by both nature and culture. Red is the first color named due to its practicality, signifying danger and sex in nature, and being the most common and least difficult dye to manufacture in culture. Linguistic differences arise when nature is not easily categorized, leading to different cultural methods of color categorization. Younger generations inherit these cultural methods, demonstrating the influence of culture on acquired characteristics. The complexity of language. Languages are complex, but not equally so. A language's grammatical complexity can sometimes reflect social structure. Linguist Revere Perkins found that languages with simpler word structures belong to larger, more complex societies whose members are often required to explain things to strangers. In simpler communities, pointing information is more common, leading to greater morphological complexity. Simply encountering many different types of a language can also lead to its simplification. The power of language. The idea that our native language affects the way we perceive and think, known as linguistic relativity, was proposed by Edward Sapir and Benjamin Lee Wirth. 
Although their theories were largely considered pseudoscientific, they revolutionized the way scholars thought about the relationship between language and the mind. While differences in grammar can point to differences in perception, it doesn't mean that speakers' experiences and perceptions are entirely different. Different languages require U.S. to express different ideas, and this can affect the way we think. For instance, French and German speakers have to specify the gender of living nouns, while English speakers do not. Ultimately, the real distinction between languages is not what they can express, but what each language requires speakers to depict. How gendered nouns affect our thinking. The gender of a noun affects our thought processes, as shown through the research of psychologist Toshi Konishi in the 1990s. German and Spanish speakers tend to describe attributes of nouns based on their gender. This was further demonstrated in an experiment by Lyra Boroditsky and Lauren Schmidt, which revealed that the gender of inanimate object names affects our ability to remember them. Gender associations have no real logic, yet they affect our recall abilities. For example, Spanish speakers are more likely to remember an apple named Patricia rather than Patrick. Language shapes our reality. The way we describe spatial relations in our native language can shape the way we think and perceive reality. This is exemplified by the Guga Yimathir Aboriginal language in Australia, which uses compass marks instead of egocentric coordinates, left and right, to describe spatial relationships. Unlike us, they don't think in terms of their body or vision. Speakers of different languages with different systems for spatial relations will view the same reality differently. For instance, when shown a picture of a girl and a tree to her left, most of us would draw the tree to the left of the girl. But Gugu Yimathir speakers would consider the tree to be south of the girl and draw it to her right since the tree is south of the house. This shows that the egocentric system is not a universal feature of human language, as once thought, and that language can influence our perception of the world. The Influence of Language on Color Perception The relationship between language and color perception is explored. Studies show that language can affect the way different cultures view colors. In one experiment, English speakers chose the greenish-blue chip over two shades of green, although the difference between the two greens was greater. The study suggests that language affects the way people process colors visually. Another experiment involved showing English speakers squares of the same color, with one being slightly different. If the odd square appeared on the right side, monitored by the left hemisphere of the brain, responsible for language and information processing, participants were quicker to recognize it. These studies reveal the significant influence of language on how individuals perceive colors. Through the Language Glass presents a wholesome understanding of the inextricable connections between language, culture, and human perception. From the striking absence of color words in ancient texts to the impact of gendered nouns on thought processes, the book showcases how language plays an essential role in defining our experience of the world. By tracing the development of color perception and examining the unique intricacies of various languages, Deutscher heralds the significance of linguistic relativity and highlights the influence of culture and nature in shaping language. In conclusion, Through the Language Glass is an enriching exploration of the boundless ways language mirrors and shapes human experiences, providing us with fresh perspectives on the world we live in and our relationship with words.